The purpose of this video is to prove the theorem that eigenvalues of Hermitian operators are real. So we start off with a generic eigenvalue equation, a operator acting on the function f equals the scalar value a and the same function f. We call this an eigenvalue equation because, of course, the function f is unchanged. We call it the eigenfunction. And the scalar value a we call the eigenvalue. We can take the complex conjugate of the entire equation. We can do this in algebra generically. As long as we do something to both sides of an algebraic equation, it's legal to do so. So let's take the complex conjugate of the entire equation. We can distribute that complex conjugate operation through each term separately. So that's what we've done here in the third line. So now we have the complex conjugate of the uh, operator A acting on the complex conjugate of the function F, and that's returning the complex conjugate of A and the complex conjugate of the function F. Since we're interested in um, only Hermitian operators, these are the operators that show up in quantum mechanics, we can use uh, their unique property, and that is namely that Hermitian operators satisfy this particular relationship. And that is that when A operator acts on F and we multiply it by the complex conjugate of F and we integrate over all space, that is equal to having the complex conjugate of the A operator acting on the complex conjugate of the function F, multiplying that by F and integrating over all space. That's the definition of a Hermitian operator. So if we take that relationship and we plug in our eigenvalue uh, equations, so the left hand side we we replace A operator acting on F with the a with the result of, of that operation, which is the eigenvalue A being returned and the function F being returned. And then on the right hand side we take the complex conjugate version of our eigenvalue equation when A operator acts on the complex conjugate of F, that returns the complex conjugate of A and the complex conjugate of the function F. Because both A and the complex conjugate of A are just scalar values, we can pull those out in front of the integral. And if we take a look at what's left behind in the integral, the, the integral on the left hand side should be immediately uh, obvious uh, as basically just the definition of normality if we've bothered to, to, to normalize our particular functions. On the right hand side, the, the order of the functions is reversed, but these are just functions that we're multiplying together. And because multiplication is associative, it doesn't matter what order we do it. So these two integrals are equal to each other. And since we recognize the integral on the left hand side as just being uh, equal to unity, if we've normalized our functions, this leads to the simplification that those two integrals are equal to 1. And that, of course, leads to the result that the eigenvalue A is equal to the complex conjugate of the eigenvalue of A. And that, of course, implies that A has to be a real number. A cannot have an imaginary component. If we took the co complex conjugate of it, we changed the sign of it, and then those values would not be equal to each other. The reason why this is an important result to take the time uh, to prove is that in quantum mechanics, we obviously have machinery, we have uh, operators, we have, uh, we have functions that are imaginary, but because we want to connect this machinery to experimental observables, we know the experimental observables are made up entirely of real numbers, so somehow it must work out that we get only real numbers. And the eigenvalues, of course, are the real numbers that we can observe in laboratory experiments. For example, spectroscopy is going to be our our way of looking at whether quantum mechanics actually gets things right. We measure frequencies, for example, in spectroscopy. Those are always real numbers, and this theorem shows us why that is the case.